Overbound here. This week I'm going to cover drawing a small pixel art scene uh, here in Photoshop. We're going to draw some grass, some foreground tiles, and a background. And in the process we're going to use uh, some of the techniques I've shown in previous weeks. We're also going to learn two of my go-to shading techniques. Uh, I refer to as line shading and notch shading. So let's go ahead and get started here by selecting the marquee tool and zooming in very close. We're just going to select a 16 by 16 area. And I've got some colors I'm going to use over here. And I just held Alt down uh, to switch to my um, uh, eye, eyedropper tool that'll pick a color. And uh, anytime you're on a color tool like the pencil tool, the paint bucket, or the uh, brush tool, you can hold Alt down and that will switch to your color picker. Okay, so I'm just going to dump some color in there with the paintbrush tool, or the, the paint bucket tool, and we're going to go ahead and shade this. First I'll pull it over here so I'm close to all these colors I want to use. Zoom in closer. Okay, like I said, we're going to use line shading. So I'm going to start, oops, already messed up. I'm going to start by just putting a straight line down here that is two pixels wide. I have my uh, brush set to two pixels and it's catching on the uh, grid so I just went ahead and turned that off. Went a little far so I'll just go ahead and pick the lighter color and fix that. Okay, now let's go with this lighter color here and do the same thing. We're making a corner piece here and I need to switch down to my one pixel brush and go ahead and select that little darker tool again and just shade. We want uh, one line of the lighter colors. Uh, it works as a transition between a darker color and a lighter color and it makes the transition a little bit smoother. Okay, I actually want, I believe this is the, oops, this is the brown we want and we'll do the same thing there. I'm going to be going pretty quick in this video. I've covered all these uh, tools in previous videos so I encourage you to watch that, those videos to get an idea of what I'm doing as far as switching between tools. Um, this is just kind of an, uh, a video to give you an idea of the workflow, um, not necessarily every tool you will use to achieve that. So I've, I've made a corner here I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hold Control and Alt down with my marquee tool selected to pull up uh, some duplicates. Now I've got a nice edge tile there and I can take this whole thing and duplicate it and reflect it with free transform and width at negative 100 and enter to confirm. Didn't catch the first time. Okay, now I have my nice floor tile. And I'll go ahead and just make it a little wider. Grab some of this to fill in between. We're working at powers of two here. You can see that right now, each one of these pieces is 16 by 16. And as they go up in size, you get 32 by 32 and so on up. Uh, it's very important that you work at powers of two or numbers that are very close to that. Um, let's go ahead and start on our grass. Uh, this is a line shading down here, just putting a line of the darker color to transition between a lighter and darker color. Now we're going to do notching, which, well, first we need a 16 by 16 area. So we're going to select the grid, 16 by 16. I can see in the info panel that it's a 16 by 16 area. So I'll just go ahead and dump this lightest color on here. Okay. And I'm going to head and switch to my eraser tool. And it's at one pixel and it's a pencil. So I'll just go ahead and start erasing some of these top colors. Kind of give an outline like uh, you might see like grass. And I'll, whoops, I'll just keep going through here and erasing. 
because I don't want all this extra. That's looking fairly good. Oops. Okay. Um, now I want to get a darker color and sort of follow that beneath. just sort of following the pattern that I already established on the top and uh, this is this is what I refer to as notching it's sort of random um, it just uh, one pixel the, the idea is one pixel is higher than the others but they aren't um, a checkerboard pattern like uh, a dither would be that's a little different there I think I'll fix that. Do yeah. Doesn't you don't necessarily want it to be exactly the same though. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down. Erase that. That way we've got a little bit more room at the top. In fact, I think I'm gonna move all this shading down just a little bit. Another pixel there. That way we have more um, of the lighter color at the top. And we'll just go ahead and finish off here with the paint bucket tool. Dump the paint in there. Now we've got two nice shades. And we can go ahead and work on our darkest shade. We'll just go ahead and sort of do this randomly. One pixel up, one pixel down is the idea. But you always want to um, vary the shading a bit. In fact, sometimes it's nice to put just a random um, space between your colors where it dips lower. <laughs> it's hard to describe the the process, but um, adding, but just notching it, and sometimes adding, skipping a pixel, and putting that lighter color or that darker color in between is kind of the idea. We'll go ahead and use the paint bucket tool to finish off that lower area. And that kind of shows me some other areas that could be better, like here, maybe even back up here. Mm, not so happy with those. So it's just kind of an artistic process of deciding where you want your pixels to land and things. That's looking pretty good. I just need to worry about down here at the bottom now. And I think that will work. So now we've got our foreground and background. Next, let's add a pattern to this foreground. Um, to do so, I'm going to create a pattern. I'm going to select a 16 by 16 area and fill it with white. Then I'm going to use my polygon lasso tool which is just a uh, selection tool that will create straight lines and connect them together and snap to the grid as well so I'll just go ahead and click three times to snap and get a 16 by 16 um, triangle and I'm gonna set my color to black and fill that triangle okay I'm gonna grab that triangle now and put it on a new layer by copying and pasting I'm gonna overlay it onto my uh, piece of foreground here I'm going to hold Control and Alt down, having my marquee tool selected, to change to the Move tool and move with a duplication. So I'll just drag out, and that duplicates uh, the, the pattern there. I'm just going to do this until I cover the entirety of the foreground. I've created a bunch of copies here over in the layers, and I need those on a single layer. So I'll go ahead and hold Shift down to select them all and merge right click and merge. Now I'll select this little blend mode menu up here that says normal and set it to a soft light and reduce the opacity down to maybe 55 percent. Maybe a little bit higher. There we go. 72 works. Okay, now I'll merge these together, and I just need to um, overlay my grass on top now. 
But I want a little bit more of a block, so I'm going to move, or I'm going to duplicate this layer, same way as before, holding Control and Alt down with the marquee tool selected. And uh, go ahead and get this grass on a new layer. Now I'll overlay the grass on top of this shape. And I'll merge my grass because I've created duplicates now by holding Control and Alt and I will remove the top here where the foreground pokes up above the grass. I've got a nice little foreground tile there. Let's add a shadow. To do a shadow with your foreground on one layer, right click the layer, hit blending options. You need to go down to drop shadow and you can see it adds a drop shadow. We want a very specific shadow though. We want um, the angle set to 90 so it's straight up and down. We want the size to be 0 so that it's the same size as our shape. And we want the spread or the distance to be 4. You want spread at 0, otherwise uh, it won't look quite as good. So with all that done, we'll just hit OK. You can see this drop shadow it created. Very nice. Um, we'll go ahead and merge these two layers together and that will. Uh, make our drop shadow a permanent part of the bitmap rather than a effect we can turn off and on. Okay, now I've got my drop shadow and I can go ahead in here and get rid of these extra colors our drop shadow created by just using the, the colors that already existed beforehand. So I'll get my uh, paint bucket tool, select a color I want to replace, and just go through here and paint. I think that's about all of them. Maybe this one here. Nope. Alright, we'll call that good. Uh, might be an extra color in there, but we're in a hurry. Um, okay, now let's create a background. We're going to use line shading for this background. So we're just going to grab a little 64 by 64 area and paint it this darkest blue. Next, or actually let's go with the lightest blue. I think that'll be easier. My uh, keyboard shortcuts would work. Um, okay, lightest blue. Then we'll take this top area here, set to the darkest. Then we'll move our selection down, set it to the second darkest and we'll do it once more here. Actually, let's do this. Is that contiguous on so I don't get rid of that swatch? Um, now I just wanna create some sort of transition between these um, different colors of blue. Oops, I said I wanted more of the middle color there. And I wanna do a line transition, so I'm just gonna select one pixel and we're going to do just like we did on the um, foreground art down there. We're just going to set a light color in between the, the light and dark color to uh, make the transition smoother. Do the same up here. Cool. Ah, now that I look at it, a little too much of the light blue. Okay. Now I've got my background, got my foreground. Um, let's move this foreground a little bit down here. Select this darkest blue, and I'm gonna do one last thing before we call this good. Lower the saturation, lower the brightness a little bit more. There we go. Make a couple of little mountains. Just fill those in. Maybe chop this one's peak off just a tad there. And get our lightest blue. Make a couple of quick clouds. <laughs> Very quick here. This is just to give you an idea how you can use different tools that I've shown you in previous videos to make your own pixel art. Of course, we're not going into very advanced pixel art here. We're just trying to get the general idea.
As I tend to zoom in a lot, in and out a lot when I create pixel art because I want to see it at multiple uh, sizes. And it's kind of just an artistic process, but um, these aren't that great of clouds, but they'll work. Okay. So now let's just go ahead and still don't like that cloud. All right, there we go. Now let's just go ahead and merge our background and foreground for the finished result. And there it is, multiple angles here. We've covered uh, this little knot shading that we use for the grass. And we've covered the line shading we use for the sky and the um, and the edges of the foreground and then we added this little pattern over top um, yeah that's really all I wanted to cover this week I hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe if you did um, there'll be more videos next week overbound out